I went to undergraduate school at uh, East Carolina. When I finished there, I took a road trip out west, ended up in L.A., and I ended up in commercial lending, which then led into, I uh, ended up in the Merchant Bank. So I did that for a while at Security Pacific Bank and then joined ING um, a few years later, where I was in charge of the West Coast Corporate Finance Group. And from there, ING asked me to go down to Mexico under NAFTA and open up a, uh, a financial group down there. Your first experience of raising capital is raising a mortgage. And I think it's relevant because mm -hmm. entrepreneurs are going to find that most ideas they have are so speculative that most of the, a lot of the initial capital raises are f using a homeowner equity line or getting a mortgage on an asset they already have because banks or other individuals aren't going to give you the money. So, you know, my first capital raise, truly, if anybody thinks about it, it's probably the same for everybody, is um, getting a mortgage. First real significant capital raise was 1997. We went out and, and started a fund to buy distressed companies. Over a three-month period, we probably visited with 100 potential investors. And um, took us 90 days, maybe it was 120. And we had 41 people invest into the fund. And uh, we're off to the races with that. We, we closed the fund in 1998, you know, we closed, did our first closing, and then went and invested. Um, we broke even. From my perspective, was it a success? It was success at raising money. It was a success in getting us into some of the businesses and opportunities we wanted to. Was it as successful as I hoped it would be? No. You know, I think in that, uh, in that raise, it was um, taking on smaller investors. When somebody says, we can't do a $250,000 unit, can we do 100000 mm -hmm. You go, okay, because you know, you know, uh, you do it. Inevitably, they take up as much, if not more, mm -hmm. and I would say usually more time and energy than an institutional fund. I mean, when you go to raise capital, um, you got to have a clear idea on what you want to do. You can't be, well, we kind of want to do this, and we kind of think this would work, and we kind of, you know, you've got to have a clear vision for what it is you want to do. you got to be able to outline that clear vision to the parties that you're interested in. And you've got to have it with a passion. I mean, you've got to come across that you have a passion for it because people invest with you because they believe in you, and they believe in you when you have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. You need to be honest upfront about what you see as the risk in it, but there's a reason you're doing it because you're investing not only other people's money that you're asking them for, but you're investing your life into it. So you've got to have a real passion for it. And I think that's what sells. I think that's the number one thing is be clear. Number two is have a real passion for it. When you're, when you're in front of an investor, be sure that you don't get so caught up in what's important to you Look at them and, and, and talk about what's important to them. Speak, don't try to impress the investor with all that you know. Mm -hmm. Look them in the eye, hear what they're really looking for, and address what they want to know. And I, I'm not saying spin it. I'm just saying address what they want to know, not what makes you feel good about what you've been able to tell them. Mm -hmm. uh, the book needs to be short and sweet. You know, you do need to have a presentation. Bullet points, not only do I think that they're fine, I think they're preferred. When you, if you're raising money the way most entrepreneurs have to go raise money, they see not hundreds of those a week, but they probably see 10, 15 a week. And some of the big ones actually do see hundreds over a month, you know. So, I mean, they're seeing a lot. So, bullet points is, is I think, preferred. Do not inundate, educate. There's a big difference. One of the things I really dislike is when I ask somebody for information and then I get an email that has, you know, 
more information than I can download and find. I mean, it's like, don't inundate, educate. You know, I want you to tell me what's in here. I don't have to read through, you know, a thousand pages to get the answer to my question. Uh, certainly institutional investors. One of the questions you'll get in your first meeting with them is, okay, how do you exit? So, um, so yes, you have to be you have to be ready, willing to address that right up front. I mean, it's going to vary. Yes, you have to plan for it. Yes, you have to address it, and it's going to vary depending on what you're what you're looking at doing. But if you have no exit plan, then you're going to limit your success in raising funds. Okay. You know, money is the root of all kinds of evil. I think my advice would be: don't deal with friends and family if you can avoid it at all. Because that is the most common way that entrepreneurs have raised money. You know, face it. An entrepreneur needs, entrepreneurs need to know this. 80, 90% of ideas flop, which means all the money is lost. I would recommend highly that they deal with people who are used to, to you know, dealing with this kind of high risk. The venture capitalist, the venture capital has, has come to mean a broader term than what it did 20 years ago. When I say venture capitalists, I'm talking about people who do invest in the entrepreneur kind of idea. They generally want a position to get up to 60, 70% of the company because they, they will tell you that in every three, five deals they lend to or they invest in, that four of them go belly up. And the money they make on the one covers all the others. 